So I woke up this morning eagerly awaiting trying out the new expansion pack service for the Nintendo Switch. After purchasing it and downloading the Genesis and Nintendo 64 apps, I started to test out some of the games. Now for some context here, I wasn't able to secure one of the wireless Nintendo 64 or Genesis controllers because they sold out within seconds. And so I'm playing the service for now at least using the stock Nintendo Switch OLED system and controller. And for additional context, I'm also using a one gig internet connection which was installed here in my home last week. And so in terms of online capacity, I've got more than enough bandwidth here to handle anything this console could ever throw at me. In short, there's big problems already with this service. Now look, this channel is an N64 related channel and so my expectations will likely be much higher than that of the general public. If you've also been here on this channel a long time, you'll know that I don't use emulation. And so the first thing that I notice when playing the Switch N64 games is that the emulation Nintendo have implemented here is a mixed bag. In all games I played, I noticed some big graphical differences which make the games look halfway between their original versions and some glaring improvements which stand out like a sore thumb. I'm not one for all of the technical reasons as to what's going on here, and I hope that somebody like maybe Modern Vintage Gamer will do a video about what is going on behind the scenes here, but things just don't look right. I also encountered some screen tearing which wasn't present in the original games, and Star Fox was perhaps the most glaring one here. In addition to this, the emulator had slowdown in parts which the original games didn't have. For the price that Nintendo are charging here, I would have expected a much more refined system and it's sadly off the mark for any purists. For casual fans however, or those that haven't played the original games to death like many of us here on this channel have, I think it gives a poor representation of what the actual console experience was like. This is further compounded by the controls which make many of the games absolutely horrible to play. Again, I think much of these issues may be solved by having the N64 controller for the Switch, but given the stock issues and the eye-watering price that they're asking for it, I fear that many people using the service will be using the default Switch or the Switch Pro controller. In some games, the controls work even better than on the Nintendo 64. Take Star Fox for example. The fluid analog stick of the Switch gives a much more smooth feel when playing the game. It makes handling your R-Wing a pleasure, and compared to the Nintendo 64 controller on the original system, it is a breath of fresh air to have such fluidity with your craft. In other games, however, the analog stick makes the games almost unplayable. My favourite game of all time, Zelda, was an absolute chore to play, given the sensitivity of the stick. Even simple tasks like running in a straight line are met with an awkward, slightly wonky run, which moves slightly to the right. Trying to get in place to open chests or go through the tunnel was way more difficult than it needed to be, and without an option to reduce the dead zone or the sensitivity of the analog stick, it makes things horrible to play. In addition, many of the games have the C buttons mapped to the right analog stick, and it makes it feel very unnatural. Wimback is rendered nearly unplayable by the sensitivity of the analog stick because trying to aim your gun to get headshots on your enemies is a pain in the ass. Some games aren't bad, take Dr. Mario for instance, which works really well and the more digital-like controls actually make it a near flawless experience. I also found the controls in Sin and Punishment to actually grow on me, and again having the slightly twitchy analog stick actually makes mowing down enemies even easier than on the original hardware, but it does take some practice and a little bit of getting used to. All of the game's audio is also a bit off the mark. Again, I'd love a tech-minded person to give an insight into what's going on here because it sounds a little too tinny in my experience. I thought that it was perhaps in handheld mode, but putting it in the dock and I found the same underwhelming audio. The actual music is some of the best around in these games, and so I hope that Nintendo looks into what they can do to improve this area because the sound is off the mark in every game. But look, that's just the single player experience, but it's the online multiplayer which I think would have sold many people on getting the service. For me, it was being able to play Mario Kart 64 online with friends at the start of the service, and I expected it to be a blast, which it should be. In short, it's horrible. There's huge amounts of lag and delay in both the control inputs and also the on-screen action. You'll be frequented by pop-ups on screen informing you of an unstable internet connection. My home network is one of the most advanced around and so I know there's literally no issues my side of things. 
I'm aware that the Nintendo Switch Wi-Fi chips are at the lower end of the market in terms of the quality, and seeing speed tests on the console itself, well, it shows that this is one component that really needs to be upgraded ASAP, which they sadly didn't do, but the same issues are there even if you're playing over Ethernet. But the Nintendo servers themselves are renowned for being poor, and so the constant lag when even playing two-player Mario Kart Grand Prix mode made the game unbearable. Literally every lap in the race I would get some kind of freeze which throws you off your race and in many cases can cause you to miss vital turns, hit boundaries or even run straight into bananas and you've got no chance to escape. This early in the service I only managed to test this out in 2 player mode but I expect that it would be even worse with 4 players. But perhaps I'll soon follow up with a more specific multiplayer video to really get to the bottom of it. Finally let's talk about the elephant in the room, the price. For the price of the service, I don't feel that it's value for money at all. You have some poorly emulated games with some terrible online services and a multiplayer mode which is verging on unplayable at this moment in time. The selection of Nintendo 64 games are good in terms of quality choices, but the quantity is just too minimal. Given that Nintendo are basically sticking ROM files into their emulator without any additional work, there is absolutely no reason why they are dripping out future releases as they go along with doing no additional work to them. The number of games should have been all of their first party games from day one. Although I tested out the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis games, I have already played them to death over the years and I don't really need another way to play Streets of Rage 2 online. Absolutely not. Nintendo were passing the buck when they said that the big price increase for the expansion pack service was due to the Sega games, which I think is an absolute cop out. To be fair, I don't think anyone wants those games, and if they did, they probably already have got one of those many compilation packages that have been available for years that Sega themselves put out directly, with pretty much all of these titles on there. As it stands today, I would urge you not to support this terrible business decision by Nintendo. Don't buy the expansion pack service, hit Nintendo where it hurts, which is their pockets, and force them to do more. This is not value for money, this is not offering an enjoyable new experience, and when you have a diehard Nintendo 64 fanboy such as myself telling you that this really isn't something you want to spend money on, and it's not a genuine Nintendo 64 experience, then I hope I can at least save you some cash in the short term. Nintendo, to save this service, you need to add more games urgently. You need to urgently fix the online problems the service has to actually make these games playable online, and get rid of the Animal Crossing DLC that a lot of people don't actually want. Get rid of the Sega Genesis games that many of us will never play, and get the price down to a reasonable level. Or go one step better and just include it as an additional bonus to all of your long-standing Nintendo Switch Online customers as a quality of life addition to that service. As always though, it's over to you. If you've got the service today and you've been checking it out this morning, what do you make of it so far? If you aren't planning on picking up, what has made you decide against buying it? As always, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section down below, and until next time.